Brothers and sisters, as time passes, it is very normal for relationships to grow stale or at least feel as though it is. And with the rise of marital problems, many of which were addressed in the last two weeks, the rosy look and feelings spouses have towards one another weaken and start to fade away. And therefore they start feeling like or as if their love story has come to an end. And that the romance they enjoyed in the beginning of their married life no longer exists. And this is very normal and common. Such speed bumps in married life are normal because marital problems can easily make a person, he or she, forget the great effort they spent from the time they got married to build this relationship and these emotions of affection. It makes one forget that it took time and that collectively they went step by step and detail by detail to grow strong in love and emotion. It makes them forget that they are supporters, they are partners in this relationship and not separate entities. Now, problems cause this. So unless we work on restoring these beautiful emotions and beautiful romance that should be between couples, things can deteriorate even worse. And today's khutbah we're going to talk about means that can help restore these emotions of affection, this love, this romance between couples. First and foremost is seeking the help of Allah by dua. We as Muslims firmly believe that everything is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. So seeking His help, resorting to Him, Subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best means of achieving anything. And secondly, which comes coupled with this, is working on ourselves, reforming ourselves and our spouses. This makes marital, married bonds or marital bonds very strong. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Ahmed Abu Dawood and others, and classified as authentic by Al Albani, said, Rahim Allahu Rajulan, may Allah have mercy on a man. And this is one of the of two interpretations of Rahima. Scholars said it's either that the Prophet ﷺ is asking Allah to be merciful or informing that Allah is merciful towards the person who does such and such. What does this man do to deserve this mercy of Allah? He wakes up to pray Qiyam and then he wakes his wife to pray Qiyam as well. وَرَحِمَ اللَّهُ مْرَأَةً And may Allah have mercy or Allah is merciful with a woman who wakes up for Qiyam and she wakes, up, wakes her husband up to pray Qiyam as well. 
It is beautiful when this type of relationship, this type of cooperation take place between spouses. It's nice for a husband to take his wife to Salat al-Jum'ah or for her to ask her husband to join him in Salat al-Jum'ah. Though praying in her house, in principle, is more rewarding. But occasionally when this happens, it strengthens the bond. I know a man who said once, the time when I feel the closest to my wife, when I feel her dearer in my heart than any other time is the time when I see her in sujood. Because this is real love. Real love is to want to be with your husband or your wife in Jannah. This is an interim stage. We're here for a short period and then we're leaving. We're departing. So if we're not keen on having our wives or husbands with us in Jannah, then it's only lust. It's not love. Communicating and expressing yourselves to one another. See, under the pressure of commitment to the family, whether it's on the husband's side by going out to work, or the wife and housework and cultivation of children, a lot of times, spouses lack communication. They don't have time for it. Or it feels as though they don't have time for it. So it decreases or stops altogether. So it's good. It's very healthy to reestablish this communication between the spouses. When your husband walks in from work, Make it a point to receive it and say, Honey, let's sit down, tell me about your day. Or you see your wife after a long, busy day, cleaning, cooking, taking care of the children, making the house ready for you when you come back, so she receives you in a very comfortable environment. Take her by the hand, seat her down and say, Sweetheart, how was your day? Tell me about your day. You see the Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. In a very long hadith, hadith known as Hadith Umm Zara, when Aisha radiallahu anha sat with the Prophet ﷺ when he entered, and she told him a long story of women who gathered and each started talking about her husband, good and bad. And they were all evil, mentioning evil things except for Umm Zara who praised, highly praised her husband. And the Prophet ﷺ listened to these many stories. A very lengthy conversation. Very attentively to Aisha. And at the end he said, I am to you like Abu Zara is to Umm Zara. So listen to her. And you listen to him. We don't know what each person, each one of us, goes through when they're far from us. You don't know what your spouse is going through. She might have had a problem with her brother, for example. You're unaware of. So she feels down. Talk to her. Express your feelings. Express your love. Expressing your love increases your love to her or him and makes him or her feel loved and cared for. Makes them feel special in your life. Makes them feel that they mean something in your life. And with modern means of communication, it's become very easy to send a WhatsApp, text message, whatever it is. Honey, I love you. I miss you. Send a heart. Send a message saying, I can't wait to get home to see you. Or I can't wait for you to get home so I can see you and sit and talk to you. It doesn't take much, but 
goes a very long way as an impact in the heart of the spouse. Make them feel that you are supporting them. You are there for them. When you walk into the house and you see your wife feeling down, or when your husband walks in from work and you see him feeling down, say something like, Honey, what's wrong? Are you okay? Is everything all right? Is there anything I can do to help? I am here for you. I am your partner. These little things mean a lot for us human beings. They mean a lot. Be pleasant at home. Laugh. Have fun with your spouse. The Prophet ﷺ, even during travel, used to race with Aisha radiallahu anha. She won him once, and then when she gained weight, in the, a later trip, they again raced. And look at this beautiful relationship. A lot of times, you feel that you're walking into a police station when you enter a house. Everybody is serious. Why? Be pleasant. Sit with your husband and remind him with things that were funny in your lives. Things that you've enjoyed. Journeys that you took together and were very pleasant. This is reassuring to the heart. It tells the other that, okay, we're having problems in life, in our life, but it's okay, this is normal. But we loved each other and we still do. It's very important. It's very important to spread this environment of pleasant, joyful life between the spouses. Spend time together. You know, in the midst of this very busy life that we live in, one can hardly find time to be with his wife or her husband. It's very nice to go occasionally, every once in a while, depending on your financial situation, of course. Take her out for lunch or dinner, or even to drink some coffee, or even just to take, to take a walk on the Corniche or somewhere in a, in a park. To get out of this routine of life. To release some of the stress that results from your commitments and from problems that arise among spouses. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Physical contact, and by physical contact, I don't mean intimate relations. I mean things short of that. You know, it's proven scientifically that. Being kissed and hugged by your loved ones increase the feeling of happiness and that you're loved. Seeing your husband off, kissing him when he leaves, or kissing your wife before you leave, receiving your husband when he comes back, or when you enter the house and see your wife, hugging your wife is a very, very pleasant thing to do. And it does increase love and affection amongst spouses. This was the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that after Salatul Asr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would enter the home of his wives, meaning the wife that was, that the turn of, uh, of whom was due, and he would sit with her, kiss her, and hug her. This is a different way of expressing your love to your wife. Or expressing your love to your husband. Smile. 
You're not in the army, you're in your house. When was the last time you smiled at your husband or your wife lovingly? Right? A lot of men walk out of the house as if they had a fight with the wife just before they left. And some ladies, when they receive their husbands, because of the pressure of, of work, he's to be punished. She frowns at his face. Why? Smile. Receive him with a smile. And see him off with a smile. Make the last thing your husband or your wife sees in your face before they close their eyes to go to sleep. A smile. What's this going to take from you? Is it going to cost you anything? Effort or money? Nothing. But again, it's very important to flourish this relationship and restore affection and emotions of love and care amongst the spouses. It's very important. There are many means, and the list can go on, but in a khutbah, you can say so much. Perhaps we can list more, inshallah, in the future. We ask Allah Azza wa to help us act upon what we hear and what we say. And to help us and our spouses be caring and loving. And enable us to resolve the normal problems that arise. Just like they do amongst all spouses. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat.